Hi everybody, it's a new year and we're back in Sunday school with our videos on YouTube and I am so glad that you have decided to join me. It might be the morning time, it might be the afternoon and it might be before you go to bed right now but I am so glad that you've decided to come along and share in a Bible story with me today. Do you know, after I talk to you today about the Bible story that we're going to think about, I would really like to bake a cake. I wonder what your favourite type of cake is. Is it a vanilla cake? Maybe you have a granny or a nanny that makes a really lovely Victoria sponge. Do you know, I've really started to grow to like chocolate cake. Mm, so many layers of chocolatey sponge with lots of chocolate cream in between. Mm, that is my favourite. Today, I think I might make a red velvet cake. Have you ever had one? They look just like this lovely red cake and whenever you're baking a cake it's really important to read the instructions isn't it you get a long list of ingredients with all the exact amounts that you need and then you have a long method maybe you've baked a cake before maybe you've helped mommy or daddy in the kitchen and maybe you've said you need 150 grams of butter you need 300 grams of flour have you ever done that Oh, I'm sure you have. I'm sure you're all very good and very helpful at baking. Well, I'm just reading this recipe and I'm looking at everything that I need and I'm looking at the method. I'm, I'm trying to read the instructions. How do I make my cake? It's saying that you turn the oven on quite hot and you get your cake tins all out and you line them and you put butter on them just so this cake doesn't get stuck in them. And then you mix the butter and the sugar and then you sift in the flour and the baking powder and the cocoa powder because it's a chocolate cake. And then you very gently put it into your cake tin. That's right. And then you put it into the oven and you cook it. Oh, only cook it for 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, at a very specific time. That must be how I make that cake. You know, I've got another cookbook here and I'm just gonna read the instructions for how you make the cake in this cookbook. See if they're any different. Oh, oh. Now, whenever I read the instructions in this book, somebody scribbled over them. It's where it used to say, mix the, the butter and the sugar and the eggs. Do you know what it says? It says you put the eggshells into the cake. Oh. That mustn't be right. Let's see. What, what, where does it say that I put it in the oven? Oh, no. It says here that instead of putting it in the oven, I cook my cake in the frying pan on top of the oven? No, that can't be right either. Do you know, these instructions, they're telling me the wrong thing to do. They're not like the instructions over here. I know they're the right instructions. These instructions... They just don't seem like the right thing to do. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna follow those instructions. I'm gonna to keep to the really good instructions because I know that they're gonna make me a really lovely cake. Do you know, in our story today, we're gonna to learn about a group of men called the disciples. Can you remember who the disciples were? They were friends with Jesus. Yes, well done. And the disciples moved around the country of Israel with Jesus. For three years, they followed him, they listened to him, they learned from him, they ate with him, they lived with him. They knew Jesus inside out and they knew his teachings inside out. And before Jesus went back up to heaven to live um, in heaven with God, he gave them a very special set of instructions. He said, I want you now to go and tell everybody about me and about the great salvation that I offer them, the good news of the gospel, and he gave them the Holy Spirit and they went out and did as Jesus told them. They went out and they started to tell people in every town all about Jesus, what he did on the cross, and more importantly, about how he rose from the dead three days later. What an exciting time that must have been for those disciples. But as we find out in the next video, we are gonna watch about how the disciples came up against some bad people who didn't like these instructions that Jesus had given them and instead they tried to teach them and tell them to do something else just like that book of weird cake instructions did for me let's watch the video and we'll talk about it afterwards 
Stories of the Bible, the Apostles and the High Council. These are the Apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on Earth. See ya. After he went to heaven, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be their helper. Then the apostles spread the good news about Jesus everywhere they went. The apostles performed many miracles and healed the sick. They met regularly in the temple in Jerusalem, and many came to believe in Jesus. Huh. All this made the Jewish high priest and his officials very jealous, so they arrested the apostles and put them in jail. But an angel of the Lord came in the night、Whoa! and opened the gate of the jail. The angel told them to go to the temple and tell people about Jesus. Got it. So at daybreak, the apostles went to the temple and told people about Jesus, as the angel told them to. Meanwhile, the high priest and his officials called together a meeting of the high council. They sent the guards to bring the apostles out of jail, but when they went to the jail, they were gone. Wait, what? They returned to the council and reported that the men were gone. Guess what? Then someone arrived and announced that the men who were in jail were standing in the temple, teaching people. Go get them! The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles. Come on, you. They brought them before the high council. The high priest said, "We gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name." Um. Yeah, but. But Peter and the apostle said, "We must obey God rather than any human authority." They told Jesus his story that he was raised from the dead after they hung him on the cross, and that now he was in heaven. They told them that Jesus did all these things so that people of Israel would turn to God and be forgiven for their sins. This made the high council furious. <laughs> And they decided to kill the apostles. But one Pharisee named Gamaliel stood up <clears throat> and ordered that the men be sent outside the council for a while. Then he warned his fellow Jewish leaders that killing the apostles might bring more trouble than good. He advised them to leave the apostles alone. Not a good point. The other Pharisees saw his point and accepted his advice. They called the apostles in and had them beat up. But they didn't kill them. They ordered them to never speak in the name of Jesus, and then they let them go. The apostles left the high council happy that God thought them worthy to suffer for preaching the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continued to teach and preach this message: Jesus is the Messiah. Wow, those disciples were brave, weren't they? You know, the only people around me that sometimes might not want me to talk about Jesus is maybe a friend or a family member or somebody that I don't even really know. They might just not like it whenever I speak about Jesus or whenever I want to listen about Jesus in church. But you know what? The disciples—they weren't up against friends and family. They were up against. Those Jewish leaders, remember them in the story. Those Jewish leaders that were telling them to stop, but did they stop? Did they did they listen to the bad instructions? No, they didn't. They listened to Jesus' instructions again and again over in their heads, and they decided that as soon as they got out of prison and as soon as they get out of the court of those Jewish leaders, they were going to go back and start telling people all about Jesus. All over again, you know. The Bible tells us time and time again that no matter what happens with anybody else in our lives, that we should always keep reading our Bibles, praying to God, and continually to tell people all about the amazing work that Jesus did whenever He lived here on this earth. And boys and girls, it doesn't matter if you have friends or family. 
that don't want you to talk about Jesus, you have to keep talking about him because it's so important that we tell as many people as possible all about the great good news of the gospel. That's really, really important. Before we say goodbye today, Sandra is going to lead us in some prayer. Some of you might have Sandra as your Sunday school teacher. Some of you might remember her whenever she's helping us in Sunday school. So I want you to listen to what Sandra has to say and close in prayer with her today. I've had a lovely time with you telling you all about that starting of the journey for the apostles. And next week, we're going to pick up right where we've left off today. Have a lovely week. If you're going to join us uh, with your books this week, it's lesson number six in your workbooks. If you haven't received your workbooks already, you will be getting them at some point this week. So it's lesson number six. And I hope you have a really good week. Cheerio. Bye. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Sandra. And Polly has asked me today, I'm one of the Sunday school teachers, to give us a little prayer before Sunday school finishes. So I hope you all enjoyed that lovely story about Jesus' disciples in Acts chapter 5, where they went around telling everyone how much Jesus loved them. And they healed people, encouraged people, doing all God's work because they loved him so much. So we're now going to close our eyes and put our hands together and finish our wee Sunday school thanking God for everything that he has done for us. So let's all close our eyes and put our hands together if you wish and we'll talk to God. Lord Jesus, we come before you this lovely Sunday morning to thank you for being with us, to thank you for our wonderful Sunday school and to thank you Lord that we can read your word and learn all about you even though you lived here on earth long ago, 2000 years ago. We thank you that we can still learn from your Bible how to live in the way that will please you the most. Thank you, Lord, for our health and strength, for our mummies and daddies, our brothers and sisters, and all our family. And thank you for keeping us safe. We ask you today to accept our thanks mostly because you came and died to take away our sin that we could go to heaven. And maybe this week, if we're speaking to a friend on Zoom, or on our iPads, or maybe over the fence to our neighbour, that we might tell that person how much you love them too, because they might never have heard of Jesus. So we asked you that you would keep us safe this week. Bless our mummies and daddies if they have to go out to work, and help us to do our very best when we're doing our schoolwork and lessons. And keep us all safe until we see each other again next week. And all of God's children said, Amen.